Every month a parade passes through my town and we're not allowed to look at it. I've lived in Arizona in the past 15 years of my life, but I used to live in a small town in the middle of nowhere. I couldn't even tell you what side of the country it's on or if it's even in the United States. The only thing I know for certain is the name of the town, Point Pine. I lived in Point Pine for the first 10 years of my life, but after my 10th birthday, we moved out of the town and my parents never spoke of it again. They were trying to forget about that town and I didn't blame them. Since moving out of that town, Point Pine has not been mentioned again. Well, until now when I'm telling you about it. I wanna preface this with saying that when I lived there, all of these things seemed totally normal as residents. But now looking back, it's kind of scary. One peculiar thing was the Point Pine Bakery. Whenever you went there, Mr. Terrence, the owner, already knew what you were gonna order. There was a rumor spread by the kids around town that he was a magician that could read your mind. Also, whenever you paid for your baked goods, you had to tip him in clothing usually being something that you grew out of. There was an old box up by the register filled with old baby clothes and shoes. That was one of the weird things, but it's not odd at all compared to the other things. Every year on your birthday, you had to get blood work done. To this day, I still don't know what the point of that was. Another weird rule was everyone had to be up at 8.13 a.m. There were even speakers for an alarm that would go off at 8.13 a.m. all over town, like some kind of amusement park. When those alarms went off, parents would wake their children as fast as possible as if it was like a fire or something. But certainly one of the weirdest things that happened in Point Pine was the Point Pine Monthly Parade. It happened every month without fail, and it was never on the same date. Each month, a student from Pine Point was chosen to be in the parade. The weird thing about this parade is that we weren't allowed to watch it go by on the streets, not from the windows, and not even on television. But we always knew when the parade was about to start because it always started the exact same way. You would hear a chorus of voices, like a church choir. The melody wasn't familiar to me. It sounded like it could be a nursery rhyme or something similar to that. Once you heard the first note, you had five minutes to get inside. Well, one year around 4th of July, me and my friend Lee decided we were going to break the rules and watch the parade. Which now that I think about it, I'm surprised more kids didn't try to do this because when you tell a kid not to do something, obviously they're gonna do it. But we didn't know where it was gonna be, when it was gonna start, or the path it was gonna take around town. So we had to just wait. Around the third week of the month, we heard the chorus start. Me and Lee looked at each other and darted off into the trees. Everyone else near us raced to the nearest building. This year, my sister's friend Reed was chosen to work the parade. We were crouching in the bushes when we heard the chorus of voices get louder and louder. And then Lee said, Dude, I see it. He tried to straighten up to see what he was seeing, but I was always a short kid and I couldn't see over the brush. Then Lee said, oh no, and covered his head and ducked down, hiding from them. I yelled to Lee, I can't see anything. Then Lee goes, shh, they might see us. I froze with fear and I stopped moving until they were about to pass right in front of us. Then Lee dove to the ground. Lee screams, oh no, and gets in a cradle-like position. Then he covers his head with his hands. I looked at Lee and asked, what? I saw her, I saw that girl, he yelled. That's when I realized he was talking about Reed. I tried to get up to see, but Lee pulled me down to the ground. Then he looked at me and he said, you don't want to see it. I think this was the first time in all the years I've known Lee that he looked genuinely terrified. I turned my back on the parade and looked at Lee. I'd had enough. I asked him, what did you see? He looked at me and said those things. They're eating her, but she doesn't even care. When Lee told me this, he started crying. At this point, part of me didn't even want to see what was going on with the parade. That's when I heard the singing get louder. They were coming towards us. I shut my eyes, but the voices continued for a few more minutes. At one point, Lee started wailing. I kept my eyes shut the entire time. After that, it continued along and made its way through town. Once we started to hear everyone get out of their hiding spaces, I leaned down to help Lee get up. But when he stood up, he kept his head down. Lee, what's wrong? I asked. I could hear him sniffling. So I asked him again, Lee? He finally responded as he lifted his head. It took my eyes. I will never forget that moment when he looked up at me with no eyes. The day after that, me and my family moved out of Point Pine. I never knew what became of Lee after that day. Just minutes after we left, my parents started to act like Point Pine never existed. And as far as I know, Lee was the only person to ever see what happened at that point.